Once we are familiar with this spread operator, now I want to introduce you to a new type of the parameter in ES6 JavaScript called REST. Syntactically, the spread operator and the REST parameter are expressed in the exact same way. We have three dots, but the REST parameter works in kind of opposite way. So let's create a simple function. I'm going to call it A and pass here parameters x and y then run to the console the sum of those parameters. Let's call the function and place here more than two arguments let's say 10, 20, 30 and 40. So as you can see we got the sum of the first and second arguments. We passed here more than two arguments, but the function is still working without any errors or bugs. So actually it is interesting how we can use the rest of the arguments. In ES5 we have a special keyword arguments which represents the arguments of the function and returns an array-like object. It is index-based and has the length property. Let's at first see in the console what the arguments look like. So, as you can see, we have an object which looks like an array. The items have the index numbers and also it has the length property. Also, as you notice, it doesn't contain only the third and fourth arguments. It includes all four arguments. So, in order to use the third and fourth arguments and calculate the total sum, we can write the following. Arguments with the index number 2 plus arguments with the index number 3. So now we have 100, the sum of all the arguments. Alright, in ES6 there is no need to use the arguments objects because the new version of JavaScript allows us to use the REST parameter, which is more flexible and convenient than the arguments object. Let's go ahead and delete those lines and after x and y I'm going to pass dot 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 REST. Actually, it is not a keyword. You can use here anything you want, like arguments or something else. But remember that we must use three dots. It's always mandatory. Let's at first see in the console what this parameter gives us. So, as you see, it returns an array, but only with two arguments, the third and fourth, which actually are missing as the parameters. In order to get the sum of these arguments, we have to write x plus y plus rest with the index number 0 and then plus rest with the index number 1. So we have again the total sum of the arguments. Alright, let's use another example to see better the power of the rest parameter. I'm going to create new function, let's call it family. Suppose that we have several members of the family, those persons have a common last name so let's place here as the first parameter, last name. Then let's assume that we have the names of the family members as the parameters. For that I'm going to use the rest parameter, so write names with three dots. As we said, the rest parameter returns an array, therefore I'm going to use the array helper method for each, and using this method we will define first name and last name for each family member. So let's pass here names dot for each. Then as you know we have to pass here arrow function with the current item name. And then let's run to the console name and then the last name. Alright, let's go ahead and invoke the function. I'm going to insert here Smith as the last name. And for the names of all the family members, let's place here a couple of names. I mean Nick, Jane, Bob, and let's say Jessica. So we have the persons with different names, but with common last name Smith. Alright, so you agree that the rest parameter is a convenient and also simple feature to use. Also, you need to remember that we have to place the rest parameter at the end inside the parentheses. Okay, it was all about the rest parameter. Let's go ahead and move on to the next topic. 
ES6 allows us to extract the arrays and objects using destructuring. It gives us the ability to get access to the array items and also the properties of objects in kind of convenient and shorter way. Let's see what I'm talking about. Let's say we have an array which consists of some numbers. Let's place here 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 and 60. And then suppose that we want to get access to those items. For that you already know that in ES5 we have the following way. Let's create a variable, call it 10 and then get access to the first item with the array name and index number 0. In the same way let's create another variable 20 and get access to it. So this is the way how we can access the array items in ES5 but in ES6 thanks to the destructuring we can do the same in a much shorter way. Let's comment those lines out then declare new variable, open square brackets and put there the names of the variables 10 and 20. Now we need to assign to it our array. So if we log those variables in the console then we will get 10 and 20, the first and second array items. So using the structuring we have created the variables and at the same time we have extracted the items from an array. So as you see we didn't need to declare the variables separately, we just needed one constant variable declaration and also we have used the array only once. As a result we got the items from the array in order. If we write here for example 30 and also run it to the console, Then we will get the third item of the array, 30, as well. Let's assume that we want to get access to the sixth item, which is 60. For that we need to miss two items, 40 and 50. And in order to achieve that we just need to place here two commas. And then we need to insert 60. Let's run it to the console as well. So you see that we got the last item of the array, 60. Ok, we are able to use the rest parameter when we deal with the structuring. So in order to get the rest of the items, let's insert here dot 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 items and also run it to the console. So we have 10, 20 and the rest of the items. But as you see they are represented as the array. It happens because the rest parameter returns an array so in order to print them out like the first and second items we can use the spread operator. So if we place three dots here before the items then it will take out the array items and display them in the console. Ok, this is the way how we can use the structuring with arrays and now I'm going to talk about objects. So at first I'm going to create an object, let's call it person and assign to it a couple of properties. First one is going to be first name, John, then last name, Smith, and age, 30. As you remember, in ES5 we used to access the properties of the objects using the following way. Let's declare variable, first name, and then get access to the first name using person.firstName and then do the same for the last name. So that's the way how we access the properties of the objects. In ES6 we can destructure the objects as well. Let's comment those lines out, then create constant. In the case of objects we need to use the curly braces and then let's place here first name and last name and make them equal to person. Let's run them to the console. So we have John Smith. 
You may wonder if those names of the variables should match with the names of the properties and the answer is yes. If we change, for example, last name into camel case, then we will get undefined. In the case of the objects, we don't have to protect the order of the properties. It doesn't matter if we write at first the age or last name. The key point is to match the names of the variables with the properties. So if we write age at the beginning and then change back the last name in lowercase, also run them to the console, we will get 30 and John Smith. All right, let's go ahead and describe how we can use the structuring of the objects with functions. I'm going to comment this code out and then create the function expression. Let's call it about me. Then insert here one parameter. I'm going to call it John. And then inside the color braces, I'm going to use the structuring. Let's create three different variables. First name, last name, and age. Those should be equal to John. And after that, I'm going to run to the console some text with the variables. I am first name, then last name, and I am age years old. Alright, let's call this function and use the person object as the argument. So we have I am John and I am 30 years old. Alright, it's fine but we can write this stuff in a more concise way. We can destructure the person object directly. I mean we have to pass first name, last name and age here. Then get rid of this line of code. So we have the same result, but as you see, we got it in a shorter way. All right, so that's it about the structuring and actually we are done with our JavaScript crash course. We have gone through lots of different topics and I hope you learn lots of interesting and new things. If this tutorial was helpful and you liked it, then please thumbs up, comment below, share the videos, subscribe to our channel and click the bell to be notified on coming tutorials. Alright, see you next time.